So you don't like the default seven day view that comes with Google Calendar. You could uncheck show weekends, but five days is still too much. You press X to show four days, but four is an unlucky number in some areas. So you use your mouse, highlight across for a three day view or a two day view, or pro tip, if you have multiple calendars, selecting one day will split those schedules within a single day. Let's get started. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff. Come for the calendar tips and stay for the somewhat cringy hypothetical scenarios. In this video, I'm going through new Google Calendar features for productivity, browser extensions that make our lives even easier, and tips specific to Google Workspace users. Diving right into tip number two, under calendar settings, you might already have a secondary time zone set up, but now you can add a label and have it reflect in your default view. Oh, and for all the haters from my last video, West Coast, Best Coast, nah, East Coast, Beast Coast. By the way, I highly recommend you enable keyboard shortcuts under settings, keyboard shortcuts, enable keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna be using shortcuts throughout this video. Trust me, it makes things so much easier. Gcal tip number three. If you don't like the default color options that come with your calendar, head on over to colorhunt.co and select a color palette that you like. I've always enjoyed their pastel collection. Click into one and then click again to copy the hex code back to calendar. Um, click the add custom color here and replace the hex code after the pound hashtag sign and click save. Google Cal tip number four, if an email thread is going absolutely nowhere, you can click the three dots within that email and click create event. Google Calendar will immediately pull your email subject line, make it the title, add everyone in the to and CC fields, and even create a Google Meet link. All you have to do is to update the time and date and clean up the description because by default, all the content from the email thread will be displayed here. Google Calendar hack number five, if you have a personal account and a work account, it's very helpful to share your personal calendar with your work one. This way you can add, delete, modify events all from one calendar view. In this case, a blue event is for work and visible to my colleagues. If I select my personal account, it shows up in purple and is not visible to anyone else. To enable this, press S to go to settings, settings for my calendars, uh, share with specific people, add people, type in your corporate account email here, for permission, since it's with myself, I choose the highest level access, make changes and manage sharing and click send. You then accept in your work account and now you have both calendar views. By the way, I take absolutely no responsibility for any breakups that might occur from one partner requesting the calendar access of another. Calendar tip number six, if you're the owner of the event but you're going out of office, click in three dots, change owner, type in the email of the new owner and click change owner. As brown nosing as this might sound, if you're transferring to another internal team, summarize the Google Calendar meetings that you own, list the corresponding new owners and remind them to accept the transfer. Doing this will win you brownie points. You never know when you're gonna come across your previous teammates again. But if you're leaving the company, it. Not just kidding, it's a small world, you never know. By the way, if you're enjoying these tips, let me know by dropping a like and feel free to sign up for my no bullshit productivity ping newsletter. Link down below. Shout out to Ayub for tip number seven, and that is if you add someone's birthday to the Google Contacts app on mobile or on web, it will automatically show up under the birthdays calendar. This brings us to tip number eight, which is if you go to settings by pressing S, import and export, and click export, you can now export all your calendars, including birthdays from Google Contacts in a zip file. If you wanna share the birthday dates with lazy friends or family, simply unzip the file and have them upload the birthdays.ics file by clicking here in the import section, selecting the file and clicking import. Of course, birthdays is a very specific use case. More relevant examples might be team vacation calendars at work. Uh, you wanna share it with like new joiners or extracurricular meetings at school and a new student joins the group. Google Calendar tip number nine, under settings for your calendar event notifications, you might have already customized your settings for this part. 
but I highly recommend you take it a step further and add all day event notifications as well. For me, birthdays are the most frequent all day events on my calendar. I'm such an angel. So I usually add a notification for zero days, which is the day of the birthday at 9 a.m. So I can be the first to wish them a happy birthday. Of course, if I were really a good friend, I would set this for a week before so I can prepare a birthday present. And that's way too much work. GCAL feature number 10 is a quickie. If you delete an event by mistake, click the settings icon here, trash, uh, select, restore, or delete forever. All right, onto two useful extensions. First is a button for Google Calendar. Three things I like about this one. First, after you pin the extension, the icon shows the number of hours until your next meeting and hovering over it shows the title of that event. Second, clicking into it, minimalist design, you see at a glance, all upcoming events. And third, this is my favorite, for all meetings with a Google Meets invite, clicking the camera icon brings you straight to the video conference. Very helpful if you're running late. Not that any viewer of this channel would ever be late, especially not me. Tip number 12, the second extension, GCAL Plus. There are a few features I use here, but I'm gonna highlight two. First is the time of day that's visible in my calendar view. I have 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. here. So as you can see, everything before five and after 11 is cut off. Second, show titles on the hover. Uh, this is helpful when you're in month view, press M for month view, and you hover over a long title and the full title pops up. Okay, so the next three functions are mainly for Google Workspace users. Fingers crossed, they'll come to the rest of us at some point. If you find out otherwise, please let me know down in the comments. Workspace calendar tip number 13 is the ability to give others the option to add your invite to their calendar. So for example, let's have a big presentation coming up. Click in, three dots, publish event, and now I can copy the link to this event and hyperlink it in an email, for example, and now the recipients can choose to save this event in their calendar if they want to. It's important to note that any update you make to the original event will not reflect in other people's calendars if you use this method. So you wanna make sure every detail is correct before you publish the event. Workspace tip number 14, for meetings with two or more attendees, you'll be able to create meeting notes directly from the event description and have that Google Doc linked to that meeting so all attendees automatically have access to the same document. I have an entire video on the SmartChest feature within Google Docs, so check out that video if you haven't already. Google Calendar tip number 15, very relevant for remote and hybrid work moving forward, and that is you can RSVP to a calendar invite with your location. In the email notification or the calendar invite itself, next to yes, you can let others know whether you'll be joining physically in a meeting room or virtually. Google definitely has good intentions with this feature, but somehow, somehow, I have a feeling that some people will use this feature to avoid certain colleagues in the office. Bonus tip, okay, not really a tip, but more of an aesthetics thing, but I add emojis to the titles of recurring events just to spice things up. Actually, drop the calendar emoji down below if you're still watching so I know who's cool. If you found these helpful, I think you'll enjoy my original Google Calendar video, so check that out. See you on the next video, and in the meantime, have a great one.